Hello, and welcome to DeKalb Talks Tourism. We're excited today to have Father Paul from Annunciation Greek Cathedral as our guest to talk about a wonderful event that he's here for. But before, Father, tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. First of all, thank you, uh, James, for having me on. My pleasure. It's uh, great uh, to be here with you and talk about this. And uh, so myself, I am a a northerner. Mm. (laughs) Uh, So I grew up in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, but actually I haven't lived there in a very long time. Um, and so I've been a priest almost 40 years, and I've served in three communities. St. Louis, when I was really young, all, all three of our children were born there. Uh, and then um, my wife is from Greece, and I met her while we were in uh, college. Ah. Uh, and, um, and so we also have, uh, uh, you know, had moved once I got my own parish, and I was in Raleigh, North Carolina for almost 19 years. And uh, now I've been in Atlanta, closing on 13. So tell us about the Braves versus the Yankees. Oh, it's tough for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Yankees have no team left, and actually I've, uh, have put in, if I could be one of their pitchers, since they don't have any. So <laughs> there you go. I, of course, I played baseball a long, long time ago. <laughs> you you're but I enjoy Yankees sports. Fan. I do really enjoy sports. Well, today you're here to talk about a very special event that the, that the church has. What is that? You know, it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, we say, we call it a Greek festival, but it really started by um, communities across the country inviting their friends to our Easter celebration. Oh. And it was, you know, they said, look, we're having all this great food. And, and believe me, when uh, Greeks get together and celebrate a, a, a very big holiday in the church, uh, they, we say they break the fast because they were fasting and not eating all these foods. And then when they, they break, break the fast, they have, I mean, everything you can imagine. And there's some cert, certain dishes that are uh, particular to certain time periods or um, you know, celebrations. Uh, so what happened is, uh, like I said, they started inviting their friends, come and enjoy you know, the meal with us and kind of like a picnic uh, style type event. And then the church starts saying, well, wait a minute, so many people want to come to this. Maybe we have to formalize it more. And uh, and so slowly they started having what turned out to be maybe or initially was a, you know, a few hundred people or maybe depending on the parish, how big it was. And all of a sudden it turned into thousands of people coming. And uh, in particular here in Atlanta, uh, roughly it's been about 40 years of festivals of course, with, with the exception of some stumbling blocks like COVID and yeah. a few other things. But even during that time, we had uh, drive throughs and uh, uh, it was amazing people how they came out and uh, were confident that we were going to serve them beautifully. And, you know, they picked the up their food. was amazing. It really was. Good. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a, even, even for the people of the parish, we were kind of hesitant because we didn't know if people would want to. You know, we had everybody masked up and gloves and, you know, we're very uh, concerned yeah. about, you know, protecting everyone. But people came out and volunteered and put their heart into it. And uh, so people were getting, you know, gyro and pastizio and some of the foods we'll talk about maybe in a little while here to share what what do we have to offer really as a community. And it's not only food, but there's right. many things. So talk about that. In, in a few minutes, we're going to talk about the obvious ones on the table, the food. But um, what's some of the things you get to do at this festival? So this year, we're changing things up in a way. Uh, we'll still be able to get all the things we enjoy at a festival, a Greek festival. But this year, it's kind of an all-inclusive event. And so uh, you do need to uh, purchase tickets ahead of time. Uh, the event is indoors, air conditioned, if anybody can relate to that right now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm sure they can. And so uh, it's kind of uh, the way we set it up, it's going to be pretty much four events, or we call it like four uh, wedding receptions, Greek, you know, big fat Greek wedding receptions. And so at those events, people have a, an opportunity, uh, first of all, to park on site admission would be included uh they would get uh greek dancing lessons if they want a tour of the church uh and then when everybody gets together in our ballroom for the meal uh we'll have some live cooking demonstrations uh, we already have a few restaurant tours uh locally that are gonna do the, do some of those along with some of the what we call the yayas of the parish the grandmothers 
who yeah. uh, you know are going to share their specialties, so their their food that they like to prepare. I can attest having a Greek mother that uh, uh, I mean I, she's ninety, she'll be ninety two years old soon, and I still have when I when I visit her, she'll cook, and it's like I'm a child again, and I remember the food that, yeah. that she made that I enjoyed so much, and. I'm amazed she can even make it still. <laughs> but uh, but it, it's, uh, I'm sure you've had that experience where you grew up with something and, and no one can ever make it like yeah. your mother. <laughs> My mom wasn't Greek, but boy, she could cook like she was Greek. Well, see, there you go. Yeah. Do you have pictures you want to show that we can talk about? Yeah. My mom made the best postizio, but it oh. wasn't completely Greek. It was her own versions of it, oh, sure. but I still miss it. I'm, I'm sure you do. So oh. we can see some of the different foods you're going to get to have and anything you want to talk about. Uh, I do want to talk about some of them. So in the right hand top corner right of the logo where it says that you're a Greek grand tour, which is our overall theme, that when you come to this festival, you're going to get a complete experience, a tour of everything from uh, from the cathedral to the food to the dancing, etc. And uh, pastries, I should have mentioned those yeah. because you can't, can't go to a Greek festival without having some dessert. So uh, in the right area, uh, side, we have uh, this year, we're going to have a, a carving station with lamb, uh, roasted lamb. So that's what you see there. And uh, we have um, the, the company that caters events at our ballroom mm -hmm. uh, is actually going to uh, offer that and, and man that station for us. Oh, nice. So they will be there all, uh, all four sessions, four events uh, within that weekend of September 22nd to the 24th. And uh, so now you see some spanakopita and baklava. So from almost like the, it could be a main dish or an appetizer to the dessert. And uh, so now here's something I got to share with you too that, and I'm sure James, you might have a similar experience. I mean, we take it for granted. Like I grew up on this food and so for me, spanakopita is like um, a pizza or right. you know something that I'm very, very familiar with. And uh, I had a, a great friend in high school who uh, loved my mother's cooking. And so he would come over the house and he couldn't pronounce any of the foods real well, but he, you know, he would call it instead of spanakopita, spanakopita, uh, instead of pasticho, he called it past the ticho. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but he, he loved the food. And, um, and actually when, when I met my wife, um, I had brought her to meet my family. We weren't even dating, but she was just a friend, uh, and we brought her home for Thanksgiving and she made these little meatballs mm. and, and my friend, his name was Mike, uh, was over the house. And you think they were like popcorn. He was popping them into his mouth. They were so delicious. And uh, yeah, it's just, um, like I said, this is, uh, I think in a way, we take it for granted, but boy, anybody that tries Greek food and now that it's become uh, a little bit more prevalent that you can find Greek restaurants and you know that has good food. Um, I mean, like most cuisines, I, I like, I like to eat. I don't know if you like to eat, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but I like to try things. Part of being Greek, you have to like to it eat. It is. We, we live to eat. Yeah. We don't eat to live. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, I appreciate good food, prepared well, well thought out, seasoned properly. And that's what you're going to, people will get if they, uh, you know, if they come to this festival. So you have to work, uh, go back to the Suvalaki picture. Uh -huh. Um, is it on there? Oh, it's not. We don't have one. We have a gyro up there, I think. Euro. Right? We have yeah. the gyro, but you always do the suvalaki thing. They always do the grill, don't you? Um, I, I kind of been all over. Okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, I, I like to get my hands into helping out. And so um, I've made a lot of gyros. Uh, I've made suvalaki. Uh, I've served pastizio and other items. Uh, I, I just I just enjoy it. I, I like being with people. Yeah. Really. So you get the Greek salad down there, Greek the hummus salad. dip. Uh, that's uh, actually tzatziki. Tzatziki, yes. Right. So that's the. Uh, I should have known that. That's like the sauce that goes on gyro and souvlaki sandwiches, and uh, you have the Greek fries there. Uh, we tease about that because we say, "Well, how come they're Greek?" And it's really the seasoning. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like Greek chicken when you put oregano on it. Yeah. It turns Greek. Yeah. <laughs> and garlic. <laughs> Yeah. Which garlic is in the lamb also. Uh, the meatballs you see over here on the other side. Uh, 
in Greek we use the term, the word for meatballs is keftevis. And, um, and again, a special recipe, and many cultures have meatball recipes. Yeah, of yeah. course, we know Italian, Italian food has great meatballs also. And um, so that's just a, a, a brief glimpse. We have some other, I don't know if we have any other pictures of uh, some of the casserole dishes or anything like that. Uh, no, but, we, not. Uh, Bethany says but we also so have something new this year that we haven't had before, and that is Greek style short ribs. Oh. So I had the that. pleasure of doing a taste testing of these. And I mean, melt in your mouth like butter. Oh, no, man. no knife needed at all. Uh, and uh, we do have uh, some of our food already is being donated. And uh, it's a wonderful uh, group of restaurants in Marietta. And uh, their well-known, I'd say, first restaurant is the Marietta Diner, yeah, which has been on diners, drivers, and dives. And I've got to go up there. I have never been. You've never been. Never oh, been. so so the owner is uh, someone I've known now for uh, over twelve years, and the way I met him was um, so I went. I was curious about this diner because I'd seen it on television. So when I moved here with my wife, we said, let's, let's just go to this diner and see what it's all about. And we didn't know that it was owned by Greek people. So we take this other young couple with us. We go to the diner and uh, we're watching this man working, kind of the manager, uh, we thought anyway, and he looked Greek. So we said, well, let's just ask him, is he Greek? So yes, he was. And he was the father figure, let's say of the restaurant group. So, uh, so we get to talking. He decides he hadn't eaten all day, so he actually puts in an order and has dinner with us. Oh, wow. Jo joins us for dinner. That's then, cool. Uh, as we're going along and talking more, he says, oh, maybe you'd like to have some dessert. And I said, oh, I don't know. We ate a lot. You know, maybe not. And, uh, and he says, how about some rice pudding? Oh, now you're getting my yeah, attention. Yeah, okay. So... Greek word, risogolo. So rice pudding. I said, uh, okay, I'll have a little bit. How hard rice pudding is to find? Oh, good rice pudding, right? That yes. or even finding it, but yeah. good rice pudding is almost impossible. Well, we have a, a priest who makes it, Father Christos. He does do a really crime. good job at that. <laughs> he doesn't do it enough, though. No, but he's talking about it. He wants to make more. Okay. <laughs> Maybe at the festival. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, so um, we're sitting there, and... So he starts bringing over, and, and if you ever go there, you'll see that their desserts are not your average desserts. If you think of like of a piece of pie, triple it in size. So while we're talking about that, is it bigger than the baklava? Uh, that's the size baklava they serve. That's the size they serve? Yeah, can you see that? Can you see the baklava? No, can you show it up to the camera? Here we go. Let's see if we can. So this is one that. of the items this you're going to get piece. at the festival. This is what they serve in that in these restaurants, actually. And uh, so that's a meal in itself, pretty much, right? <laughs> but when you come to, to the festival, you're going to actually get a piece of baklava like With this. With your dinner. With the dinner. Yes. So, and talk about what we have in front of us. Oh, spot now, you know, I'm hungry. <laughs> get, get a bite. Please you're try it. to. Try it. I can smell it. It smells so good. Hmm. So uh, just to good. tell you a little bit about what's in it, some ingredients are secret, right? Mm -hmm. We can't tell all the secrets, but um, it's uh, sauteed onions and spinach with feta cheese, some other herbs, and sometimes we even put additional cheese in it. And then it's uh, stuffed into layers and layers of phyllo dough and baked in the oven. So, uh, yeah, um, can I take a bite too? Oh yeah, oh, okay. please father. This is really good. I haven't had spanakopita mm -hmm. in a while now. Wow. They talk about my mom. My mom added feta cheese and blue cheese oh. to it to wow. make it a little different spin. It's kind of like an American twist. Too. American twist, yes. Which is good, actually. It's nice and to we try have, things. Um, awesome other cookies. Oh, yeah. So these, I like to call them the Dunkin' Donuts of Greek desserts. Yeah. Good, 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 good way of pointing it out. And, uh, of course, it's not Dunkin' Donuts now, it's Dunkin'. That's true. <laughs> but you get the idea. Or if so, you're a coffee lover like me, a Tim Hortons oh, of the cookies. I mean, when you put this in coffee, yeah. you're in heaven. So the, the Greek word for these are kuludia, or when they're smaller, kuludakia, like a smaller version of this cookie. And um, it's kind of like a butter cookie. Yeah. 
Very, very And they're very dry tasty. on purpose yep. to be dunked in yes, coffee. Yes, yes. And you see, if you can see here, they're twisted. Uh, they actually take the dough, roll it out, and twist it like this, and then bake it. They're really amazing. So these are all parts of what you will experience at the And festival. more. And, and more. more. The, one of the uh, features this year, another new item on our menu, is going to be for, um, cheesecake baklava. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. No that. calories. No calories. <laughs> the festival is zero calories. I think oh, yeah. The... You, can't, you can't even think about calories no. because it's a you know, once-a-year thing for this now, type. I think we have a video, a short clip that kind of shows different aspects of what you're going to experience at the okay. festival. If you can play that and you can talk about it or we I'd can love watch to. the video and talk about it because it does show different aspects. If you've added some more components to this year's festival than what we've traditionally done. Yes. So we'll let her pull that up. Okay. Let me eat some more vodka, some more spanak open. Please do. Uh, Are you talking about the one that Bethany made? Hmm? The one that Bethany made? Yeah. Right, okay. I think that's the only one we have. We're trying to get Father to open the door and do a video. Are you going to do that? I have, I, I, she's writing a script for me, so I'm going to try mm -hmm. to do that. Okay, so for the price of the ticket, which adult tickets are $50, everything's included. Uh, a full meal, you can get all you can eat, as it says here in our video. And also you can, um, and you, it includes the dessert, and then you can buy other desserts to take home. Uh, we have uh, soft drinks and water included, but if you want to buy an adult beverage, those are also available. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I, will, I, will, I would like to talk just quickly, if I can, about also the church tour. Uh, if you've never been to the inside or seen the inside of our cathedral, I mean, it is amazing. It's yeah. not your average... I mean, even all Orthodox churches are very ornate and beautiful. But we're, we're one of the few churches that have all mosaics. Yes. And the mosaics are, if people are not familiar, uh, these uh, it's Murano glass from Italy. And to make a mosaic and to put actual figures, faces, and uh, with uh, uh, wearing garments, with, uh, showing their f hands and all the features and movement... I mean, it takes true. I mean, there are very few people in the world that can do this now. So here's a here's some beautiful pictures of our cathedral. So you can see the the big dome inside of Christ in the dome. Uh, they say that that's over 3.5 million tiles just to create that one icon. Wow! And these were installed most of them in the late 60s when the church was built. So they had to ship all this in. Uh, crates and pieces like a puzzle uh, to Atlanta and That's then they were assembled on the site. If you go to the bottom third one over yep. it, it shows the big dome. Right, That's the dome, the, uh, the central dome in the church with the icon of Christ. When you go into the church as you walk in you just lift your head up you see this beautiful icon right above you. And it's all squares. Which all is so little cool. tiny, tiny pieces. Tiny little pieces different in colors. A square. Yep. Oh, bigger yes. Square to be installed. Depending on the icons, some are right. smaller ones, bigger squares, bigger yeah. pieces, and and most of it you can't tell that they're actually yeah. like a puzzle, and it all comes together so beautifully. Now, isn't this? Am I correct, Father? It's like the largest um, unsupported, well, supported, obviously, but no. Oh, dome. No. Uh, support columns. beams or columns in like the United States. I don't know if it's in the United States or not, but. Probably. It's one of them. Um, yeah, it was uh, a unique design even then. It kind of, the idea was mirroring uh, the Church of Holy Wisdom or St. Sophia in Constantinople, mm -hmm. present day Istanbul. And uh, that dome is still, which was built in the uh, 5th century uh, by the Emperor Justinian. Uh, it, it was, uh, they, they prayed that the dome would not collapse because yeah. they had trouble. It's it's all geometric, the way they cut the stone to lean on each other, to bear the weight and not have any columns or any beams holding it up. And so it, uh, at the base of the dome, there's four what's called the pendentives, uh, these areas, and they put angels 
cherubim angels in those four corners because they were hoping the angels hold would hold up, up the dome, which it's still there, right? So after yeah. all these centuries, and uh, it's an amazing place. I have had the chance to be, go there several times. I just went again this year, and um, it, it always is just I'm in awe when I go there. Uh, and there are still some mosaic icons that have survived. All so you get centuries. to learn all this if you take the tour. Absolutely. So you're going to learn about the Greek Orthodoxy. Yes. The church. Yep. But you're also going to learn about the Greek culture. Correct. Uh, so, uh, you know, I happen, like you, um, you have some Greek blood. Right. Uh, my mother was actually born in Greece, came over after World War II, and they had a civil war in Greece. So she came over during a really, she went through a really rough time when she was growing up in Athens during the wars. So she came over. My dad was born in this in uh, my hometown. He never left there uh, in Connecticut, and um, his parents came from Greece. So my mom and dad met in a, at uh, an Ahepa dance. Uh, yeah. Ahepa is a fraternal organization that uh, we have uh, throughout the country, and the first chapter was here in Atlanta. So um, so they met at a dance uh, in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and. You know, they hit it off, and thank God because I wouldn't be here talking yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> and I have, I have, I had two older brothers. One, my brothers, uh, passed away fairly young, and so, um, uh, but it was three boys: my father and my poor mother. She had to; she was outnumbered by us, and uh, and we were sports fanatics. So we played, we coached, we had opinions. Uh, we still have opinions about everything, and. Uh, in fact, this evening I'm going to go to the Yankee Braves games. Oh, there Bra you Braves go. Game. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be tough. I'm going to probably wear my jersey inside out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a tough, uh, tough night because uh, Yankees aren't doing well this year, and the Braves are amazing. I mean, they have a great team. I'll be shocked if they don't win the World Series this year. Honestly. So, wow. Yeah. You're really doing good then. Oh yeah. Yeah, they uh, they have it all, everything you need. Uh, so, you know, the culture uh, was, um, I'll say, gently embedded in me growing up. Uh, but it, this, it was all centered on the church uh, because in the early days of the church in America, people would go, uh, would begin churches according to their ethnicity because they spoke the same language. Right. They would get um, clergy from their country, their homeland, to come right. over and serve them. And uh, so... Uh, our whole social life was centered around the church community. And that's why we had these socials like picnics and, you know, big events, Greek dances and right. that kind of thing. So all that kind of came, all that kind of came together into the concept of a, of a festival because the word festival in Greek is panayidi. And that word really connects with, uh, with celebrations in the church. So whether it was Christmas or Easter or um, maybe a historical day that, like for the country of Greece, uh, March 25th is um, uh, when uh, when Greeks declared independence. Uh, yeah. And so every year uh, they have some kind of a celebration and we celebrate the culture. Uh, so there's usually dancing. And uh, I got to tell you, James, I cannot dance. I, I would wish I could, but yeah. I'm just not good at it. I have two left feet and seam up blocks. <laughs> so I second that. <laughs> I have the same. And, you know, and the things I love music. I yeah. love all kinds of music. So my heart is going to the music, but my feet are not cooperating. Yeah. So uh, they're going to have Greek dancing at this. Yes. And going to be able to learn how to Greek dance. Yes. Uh, not me, but no, me neither, me neither. <laughs> I will cheer people on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this will be a unique opportunity because it's there's a designated time period in the beginning of the evening or or day when these sessions take place, and people can come in and we have some experts that know how to uh, great instructors that know how to teach Greek dancing, so they're going to have this opportunity to learn, and then later in the evening after they watch dance performances by our amazing dance groups. They're going to be able to test out their dancing skills. So one other thing I think is going to be really interesting is the culinary part, not not the eating. Mm. Of course, you want to do that, and you're going to enjoy that, but the cooking demonstrations. Right. So um, I can't say for sure yet. I know one is uh, is absolutely for sure. The other one we're still talking, so I don't want to 
say it until it really happens. But I, I can say this, that um, so there is uh, the restaurant group in Marietta that has, about, I think it's five restaurants. It's the Marietta Diner, the Marietta Fish Market, uh, the uh, uh, there's an Italian restaurant, a Mexican restaurant, and the Cherokee Cattle Company. So a, a beef steak type place. Uh, now you're talking about it. <laughs> we'll get into Yellowstone after I mention <laughs> that. But uh, anyway, so um, so the owner, his name is Gus uh, Celios, and he's been on two times with uh, Guy Fieri on Diners, Drive-Ins, oh, wow. and Dives and featured Spanakopita and Pastizio and a few other things to Very see cool. how it's made. And so, uh, so he and a few of his chefs are going to offer a cooking demo. Uh, now, we, we don't know which session it is yet, right. but we will make that known as soon as we find out. And uh, and then uh, I, I watched this man in in, in action, uh, how he how he manages his restaurants. And he, you know, he he's on top of everything. So just to give you an idea, when I met him, I met him to talk to him this past Sunday. He went to bed at 530 in the morning. Mm. I got up at 5.30 in the morning <laughs> to go to church. Uh, but he got up, he, he went to bed at that time because uh, even though he doesn't really have to do this, he ends his shift going to the diner, and that's where he kind of checks out what's going on there and ends his oh, wow. his day or, well, more than a day. Right. Um, and so he was telling me that when he started the the Italian restaurant, he went to New York and found a expert who made pizza and brought him to Marietta and started the restaurant with him. Oh, nice. Yeah. So the pizza, uh, he was telling me that for a while, uh, it was, uh, they start out with buy one pizza, get one free. And so <laughs> I guess he didn't check on it. He goes years later and he says, you know, we should probably put that back on for a while. And, and they say, well, we never took it off. <laughs> So it was buy one, get one free. Uh, and New York style pizza that they've been making there for years. It's open, been open like 20 years or more. I'm going to have to try that because I love pizza too. Do you? Well, especially mm. Bethany loves pizza. The cattle company though. Mm. Oh. Yeah, the Cherokee. Well, you know, uh, the only problem with that is, is what is it? 222 days a year you can't eat beef. <laughs> well, you got to enjoy the other ones. That's true. <laughs> I added that up one day. It's like, how yeah, many days can it I is. not? It's eat? only about 85 or so, I think, something where you non-fasting days. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have a lot of cows that time and, and lamb. And but, everything. you know, for our health, let's, it's not good to eat too much beef. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, you know, you have to cherish it when you do. Uh, but uh, there are so many other great foods. I, I think, um, you know, again, souvlaki is an interesting uh barbecue type item or cook, cook I thought up. you're gonna t you're gonna coach that you're gonna teach how to do that well I'll try <laughs> I know how to eat it more than no I, I'll tell you this the of course there's a every culture has a unique type of spicing that goes on and olive oil is I mean it's like water you have to have it and right. everything pretty much and so even when you marinate the chicken or pork to make souvlakia you have to have olive oil salt and pepper garlic uh, lemon juice and there's some other, you know, I, I like to call them secret ingredients. Uh, but the, uh, and then there's also making sure you get good cuts of uh, of pork to make yeah. the souvlaki. And uh, and grilling is, uh, uh, you know, there used to be a show with Bobby Flay called Boy Meets Grill. I think that, I've that's, heard about that. That's me. I like yeah. to meet the grill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it and it's just a simple sandwich, really, but... And, and it's made sometimes different ways, but um, what we're going to try to do now is make it a little bit more both the yido and souvlaki like they make it in Greece. And we're going to add the the potatoes, the, the fried potatoes, the Greek potatoes. Oh, inside. the Greek wedges. Yeah. Not not what we saw there. Not uh, the it could be that ones. or something like we do that we've served the wedges before, yeah. but you insert them right in that sandwich. Oh. Along with the tzatziki sauce, the, that... Um, Yogurt and sour cream sauce with dill and and, and that sounds like a sandwich in Pittsburgh. That, oh, that had had potatoes inside. Oh, Pramani's is that it? Yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always put French fries to top it off. Yeah, exactly, something like that. So, uh, yeah, and then you 
wrap it in a pita bread and you know just stuff your mouth uh, stuff your face with it pretty much <laughs> uh so when we do this this year with the food because it's an all-inclusive event and it's all you can eat we're going to have food stations so inside our ballroom rain or shine it's going to be beautiful uh nicely decorated uh, everything I mentioned before with cooking demos and dancing and so on. But there's going to be two, the two sides are going to have several stations. So if you want to go to the kind of the meat station, you can go there. If you want to go to the vegetarian station, you go there. Straight to the meat. <laughs> well, there, uh, listen, people, there are vegetarians and, and they're very uh, dedicated to that. So we have to offer that. Oh, too. yeah. So we have uh, one of the dishes in the vegetarian areas is gonna. It's called turlu, and turlu is a um, several vegetables: potatoes, uh, zucchini, eggplant, onions, mushrooms, and uh, peppers. And you cut these all, put them in a big pan with uh, again different spicing, and you bake it in oh, the that oven. That sounds so good. So it's a nice uh, for us. It's probably a side dish, but right. it can be a main dish. And then there's also I, I, I love the word for this uh, one particular dish uh they're called yigandes which means giant and they're actually giant lima beans in a red sauce oh yes i really like that yeah, so it's amazing will... how much vegetables my meat the meat eating person see? really enjoys see? <laughs> <laughs> and of course there's salad and some cheeses and olives and some greek um uh sausage oh uh that's the greek word is lukaniko and uh, that'll be grilled and served. Can there. I have stuffed eggplant? Uh, no, no eggplant. Uh, no, nothing stuffed that I know. Eggplant with the vegetables, though. Oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely. And of course, spanakopita, uh, and uh, maybe tiropita, cheese pie and spinach pie. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of food to choose from. So you can't come here and, and not. You have to be hungry. Oh, you, you should save up. Yeah, to make sure you're hungry. No question. And, and the thing is, what I love about this format is you can you can focus. You don't have to get in one big line. Yeah. You can just go to the place, straight to the station you want to get something from, and, and go get it. And uh, and I mentioned the beef short ribs. It doesn't sound Greek, but uh, the, the cooking of them is just the spicing again, and the taste is amazing. I'll have to bring a sample for you sometime. Oh yeah, we need this now. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have I didn't have lunch or breakfast today, so oh, no. you're really making me hungry. Get another bite. Get yeah. another bite. I need one too. So I, I, you know, the I'm looking at the menu. I think we've mentioned most things. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier about meatballs. Uh, I think uh, you know the assorted cheeses. Oh, it's village salad, which is a little bit more. Uh, streamlined. It doesn't have lettuce usually in it, but it has cut tomatoes, cucumbers. Now, I'm dying to know, a true Greek salad that does not have lettuce, right? No. So why is that? Well, a lettuce, village salad. The, but does, does a, it, like if you're in Greece, mm -hmm. when you go back home, do you have iceberg or romaine or whatever? Is it like what I know as a Greek so, salad? No. <laughs> yeah. So you could have um, a kind of a lettuce salad that would be just lettuce it could be chopped lettuce with olive oil and, and lemon juice on it and salt and pepper uh but the village salad is strictly tomatoes cucumbers onions usually red onions red onions yeah uh, so maybe sliced peppers feta cheese and olive oil and i know i love a great oregano salad, a village salad yep and uh I, I gotta tell you when i lived i lived in greece for a year back in the 80s and when you go into a Greek restaurant, the first thing you order or they bring is bread, and usually the first item you order is a Greek salad. I mean, I don't think there's any meal without bread and a Greek salad. <laughs> and then you get yeah. the other things. <laughs> so uh, I got to tell you, I, I love some of the, they're called tavernas, these type of restaurants where they specialize in um, food that's cooked at the, at the time. You know, not not something that's prepared ahead of time. Mm. But it's cooked right when you order it, and so uh, my favorite one, of my favorite places where, where they is where they had rotisserie chicken. Oh yes. Uh, before they had here Sam's yeah. and Costco, yeah. <laughs> there was common. I mean, you would go and there'd be a 
it didn't even have to be a big restaurant, but it was in the window, all these beautiful chickens on a rotisserie and other kinds of meats. And they would, you just order, they cut it right off, put it in, you know, wrapped it for you, and you took it home and ate it. Not exactly the same, but it's kind of like how when we make a gyro, you're actually slicing the lamb right yes. off the... Yep, right off the, I guess you could say, cone or yeah. how they make it. Um, yeah, I have, uh, uh, I've tried a few home recipes with that, which is really interesting. I saw something recently on social media where they, they took um, a white onion, chopped it in half, put them, put them on a sheet pan, put two skewers, marinated the meat, and then made little small like cones of gyro. Oh, and baked it in the oven, and then sliced it. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Very cool. It looks cool. <laughs> if you see it on the on the on social media, it's it's really interesting. I said, "Wow, who thought of that?" You know. Well, you know what's funny is the office here. We used to always have Thanksgiving to the, in the building. Oh. And one of my uh, employees, he uh, had to retire with COVID. He would always make Thanksgiving dinner. Nice. But being Greek, he added lamb. <laughs> and so my saying is, what Thanksgiving dinner doesn't include lamb? <laughs> lamb, and, and, you know, we also have pastizio. Yeah, pastizio. <laughs> he didn't make that. So for people that don't know, pastizio is like a uh, like a Greek lasagna yeah. is what I refer to it as. And uh, so it's layers of macaroni with ground beef and, uh, and really a French uh, sauce, bechamel sauce on the top. And... Uh, Someone was just telling me yesterday there was a uh, a Greek chef who went to France many years ago and uh, created a cookbook, and that's where he learned to put the cream sauce on top oh. of the pastizio and moussaka. But it's like real Greek. Oh it's yeah. Still, even uh, if we got that French influence, it's, oh, yeah. it's something you think the, of the, when you're Greek. The whole foundation is Greek, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the, yeah. again, this I think the spicing, like in every culture, there's certain because of where where the location is or the availability of spices that they usually took what they had that grew naturally and uh, and put it into their cooking. So in some countries, whatever that those spices are that they had plenty of, they would just incorporate that in their cooking. And uh, it makes sense, right? Like Greeks is oregano. Oh. I mean, you go out and pick it. Mm. You know, uh, up in the mountains, they would just pick all And even oregano. buying real Greek oregano is different than just going to the grocery store and getting oregano. It is. Man. It is. The flavor is amazing. Well, Monica, what have you had? I, I know you're vegetarian, but you got spanakopa to theropa. Have you had anything Greek? The only thing I've had is baklava. Well, there oh. you go. My dad loves that. So. You went straight for the dessert. Yeah, huh? straight for the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a piece here waiting for you. Yeah, I'm, I've been eyeing it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also, by the way, two other ones there. Um, basically, it's uh, one of them here is like a rolled baklava with chocolate drizzled on top. I'm not sure why you would want to stay away from that one, right? <laughs> mm. Chocolate on anything. It has white and Now, is that chocolate. traditional Greek, or we borrow that from other... Oh, we added chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, rolling it like one? that is traditional. And that's like a rolled one that's cut. And I think that's a piece... Yeah, it's just baklava in a rolled form. Now, are you going to do the baklava ice cream? Uh, no, not so far. Yeah. But now that you mention it, Oh, man, that is amazing, too. Yeah. Especially as hot as it is. Oh, I know. Of course, the good thing is everything in this festival is inside. It is. So like you said, rain or shine, rain it doesn't shine. matter. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. You have the church tour. You have the cooking. You have the dancing. You have the eating all inside. Absolutely. And and the other thing, too, um, you know, oh, let me explain a little bit about why we're trying this, by the way, is because we, we saw that because of our location by eight, Highway 85, you know, right off the Claremont exit, basically. Uh, on a Friday night and during busy times, it is so hard to, yeah. you know, we had to have people park at uh, another place, send buses, get them to the church. And, and it was, we saw that it was, we thought for the patrons, it was difficult. And so one of the things now is you have parking on site. Right. So you just park, walk up to the entrance, and then experience the whole the whole day. So how many people, how many tickets are available per uh, show? That's important because they are limited. So we figure a little bit over 400 each session. So, so there's Friday dinner. Friday dinner. Saturday lunch. It's more than lunch. It's a longer period of time. Saturday evening and Sunday. Sunday will be starting after probably about 10 o'clock or so. 
and it'll go till three three thirty. Just kind of like a brunch, but yeah, yeah. The food will be the same, but it's kind of a brunch time period. Yep. And so all the entertainment will be the same. All the food, everything will be duplicated four times. So Sunday you're gonna you're gonna I guess do the church tours after church, or you're just gonna have everybody come to church. No, no, after. (laughs) It'll be right after church, and we start church earlier that day. Oh, okay. That makes sense. We can get started a little bit earlier. Then you have Father Ken running it, so you'll be done in like 55 minutes. <laughs> we will be done pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, no, no question. <laughs> so, again, tell us the date. Uh, so the dates are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, September 22nd through the 24th. And um, and, I'll, and maybe if I can just run through and yeah. say, here are the highlights again. So tours of the cathedral, uh, dance lessons live music so we have a band and we have dance performances so what we mean by that is we actually have uh dance groups that rehearse and practice for the festival and for other events all year in costumes uh then we have of course the food we have talked about extensively but it's you know a taste of greece starting with carved lamb and uh gyro and uh suvlakia and spanakopita and pastizu and musaka and the short ribs and so on i keep mentioning those james because i really like them i know so that's that. uh all you can eat and then there's the cooking demos so a little bit of everything for everyone it's a great whichever session you pick it's a great day it is it is and uh very comfortable you don't have to worry about anything take your time uh it's it's just a big greek party and uh you know this is something as i mentioned earlier we grew up having these uh just parish or family dances with food and dancing so that's really what this is all about and you can buy your tickets online and uh, so you could go to our uh, festival website which is atlanta greek org. uh you can look at, look on social media where there can be a link to click on to go to that website and it's a fairly easy process there. You'll see purchase tickets and go on. And when the Greek cathedral's easy to see, a big oh, dome yeah. right off Claremont, right off I-85. Right. So it's very quick off the interstate. It is. It is. And uh, we have plenty of room, so we shouldn't have any. So we have the large ballroom, large church for the tour. Yeah, the we have this beautiful atrium. There. We have uh, uh, just a lot of uh, wonderful space, and we're looking forward to filling up and by the way i wouldn't wait too long to buy tickets because they will be going quickly and uh don't miss the chance for this we hope everybody tries it out so if you have any great closing story a great closing story uh, about festivals festivals or hmm. yeah, what's your greatest festival story well, I, or I, church tour story or okay well i i will give you some festival experience for me because I've been doing, like, working at Greek festivals since I was, I don't know, like 10 years old. Uh, I have a picture. You were talking earlier about souvlaki, the shish kebab. I have a picture from when I was about 17 uh, standing over the grill cooking. And I still look at that and I say, wow, what was, what was I thinking? <laughs> but, but, you know, you could, when you go to a Greek festival, you kind of hear with the music playing it's almost like your whole body you experience yeah. this joy and it's like a like a uh i don't know a rhythm that you feel inside yourself so between the eating and uh you know learning things about the church and the dancing and uh being having the fellowship with your friends and everything and of course a little bit of uh nourishment mm-hmm. uh <laughs> i mean you just leave feeling like you're you were you know just on the top of the world and so I felt that so many times, and I, I, when I was in some of my previous two parishes, e- each parish did something a little bit extraordinary, uh, and uh, and you had different people, but you had the same spirit, yeah. and you know people are volunteers; they're they're sometimes spending days and days to set up and do all this and make things and bake things, products and. Um, I mean, they love it. And, and this festival is like almost com- exclusively volunteers. That's correct. That's correct. So um, we're and very excited about that. Thank you. Oh, and we have a little th- something for our parishioners to get warmed up uh, the week before. We actually have a 
church, family, Glendy, celebration, dance. Uh, it's kind of an appreciation. Yeah, Bethany said I need to read the bulletin more because I was like, <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> well, Monica has something she wants to try out. So we're guinea pigs for this. Okay. It is a um, trivia contest. Oh, really? With things I'm sure you're going to know all of them. I doubt if I'll get any of them, but we'll I, see. I hope I get them right. I don't know. But I'm worried now. <laughs> she's got a buzzer or something we're supposed to hit. Oh. Yeah. And... Uh, Oh, look at this. I say, I've never experienced this yet either. So you and I are both on the same wavelength. Ooh. So she's going to have buttons for us to hit. Yeah, so you have like 10 seconds to oh. answer the questions, but hit it whenever you have the answer. <laughs> oh, you give me the green one. <laughs> the Either green is go. Or something. I, have the, I have the Greek one. You have the Greek the blue. one. <laughs> I have the Martian one. <laughs> the Martian one. <laughs> At least we could have had like a... Yellowstone color or something. <laughs> okay, one second. Oh, this is nice. There we go. How many questions do we have? I think it's like four or five. Oh. Not that many. Okay. But, okay, here we go. <laughs> He's already ready to hit the button. <laughs> okay, the traditional Greek dance where you hold hands and move in a circle is called. Oh. I'm going to oh. say. Yes, what do you think it is? Chesapiko. No. Oh, Sirto. Oh, Sirto. 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 Well, I knew the one I would have to say was Zorba, but I knew that wasn't correct because that was the that's movie. Not, and that's not in a dance or a circle. Uh, but the other one is. <laughs> that's good. So we what's Chesapiko then? It. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Sirtos? Sirtos. 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 So, so what's Chesapiko? I mean, it's similar. You're holding hands in a circle and dancing, so. Huh, so that could be right. You know, the casapica okay. is the butcher's dance. The oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Ready for the next one. Okay. We should have had the dance group here to answer these I know. Questions. Name two other countries that are always represented in every modern Olympics, not including Greece. Hmm. That's, oh. Yes. I'll say Italy and France. Italy and France. Austria. Oh, you got France. France. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. Italy isn't big enough or something. Hmm. They're right next door, though. Great degrees. Britain, I get. <laughs> France. Yeah. Okay. okay. Unfortunately, nice. I was thinking Russia, but they aren't always actually in all no, the Olympics. No. Kalmata uh, olives are named after a city in which region of Greece? Ooh, okay. Peloponnese. Well, that's the region. Peloponnese. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. It's I was going to say San <laughs> Santorini, but I'd been wrong. It's actually the name of the olives in the city is where they're <laughs> where they're from, Kalamata. Oh, okay. Kalamata. Yeah. But in... Palamata is part of southern Greece, which is called the Peloponnese. Well, what comes from Crete? We well, should be we should be from Crete. <laughs> yeah, Are you what... for, you have Cretan roots? Roots? Yeah. My oh. uh, my dad's mom and dad were born in. And Cretan before they came over. Oh, wow. Nice. Used to work Cretans. They have a lot of parishioners from there, too. Want to go to Crete sometime. I've been there. It's okay. nice. You got to go. Okay, what's the next one? I'm getting killed here. <laughs> In the high school musical films, oh. Zach Efron plays star basketball player and popular high schooler Blank Bolton. His first no name is also the name of ancient kingdoms, of an ancient kingdom that once abducted Helen from oh. ancient Greece. Troy. Yeah. Troy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the name, but I had no idea about Zac Efron. Or <laughs> Isn't Zac Efron um, the new Kirk, or is he the new Spock? Is he neither one? Uh, I, I don't know. know. Yeah. I don't oh, watch well. that either. I don't know who it is. Then. Oh okay. wow. And oh yeah, Troy. So I need Beth, and she would tell me. Oh, who thanks it is. for playing. <laughs> hey. So you get to win a special coffee cup. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Atlanta's you. Let's hold that up, right? Special coffee cup. Oh, nice. So with uh, the podcast, the cab talks tourism. <laughs> so you're our first guest that actually gets to have one right away. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's so great being here with you, and I certainly appreciate everything. Uh, I am eyeing that spanakopita still. So. Oh, you need to go ahead and eat it. Well, yeah. we'll go ahead and end the show. Thank you all for joining our podcast today. Make sure you get to the Greek Festival coming up September 22nd th through the 24th. And buy your tickets at AtlantaGreekFestival.com. Org. Dot org. AtlantaGreekFestival.org. Correct. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.